It does not matter what kind of oscilloscope you use if you cannot get the signal into it. And one problem is what happens when you cannot hold a probe, especially during debug. This simple looking adapter from Caltest Electronics makes probing and debugging signals much easier. In this video, I show what it is, how I use it, and why I like it. Just a heads up, I bought all of these probes myself. And so this is a review video, but the too long didn't watch is that I like and recommend them. So welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James, let's go review. The setup is a passive voltage probe and the twin lead adapter. The probe comes with normal passive probe accessories and the adapter comes with a couple of SMD test clips. Inside the adapter is a little socket or hole where the probe tip contacts. A metal strip up the side touches the ground collar. Once attached, the test leads connect to either a header pin or the SMD grabber. At least I think it's okay to use header pins. I'm a little bit worried that they might stretch out the sockets. So far, so good. These SMD grabbers are meant for IC leads, but also work on small pins. Larger pins are harder because their tiny claws need to fit all the way around the target. But once they are in place, they are very robust. You can attach the lead wires and move them around without them disconnecting, usually. Caltest sells them individually for about 25 money units or as part of a bundle for about 140 money units. That probe is 500 megahertz. Alternatively, you could buy a 350 megahertz probe for about 60 money units and add on the adapter instead. After all, you are not going to get the full 500 megahertz through those little wires. Now, my interest is mostly the twin lead adapter. So I bought four of those and two of the 350 megahertz probes. Those probes are a fixed 10 to one attenuation. Their 3 dB bandwidth is 350 megahertz. They have 16 picofarads of loading and with the scopes one mega ohm present 10 mega ohms of impedance. When looking at the Caltest part number, the RA stands for readout actuator, which sounds super impressive, but it's basically this pin that some scopes use to detect a 10 to one probe. Without the RA option, you have to set the scaling manually. The probes themselves will work with any oscilloscope that has a one mega ohm input, even old analog scopes. So you might be wondering if you have to use the adapter with a Caltest probe, and it definitely helps. However, I tried a few other five millimeter probes in my lab. This RNS isolated probe did not fit at all. This high voltage probe was a little bit too thick. Plus these aren't really high voltage accessories. Well, I assume so, the data sheet does not say. These Multicomp Pro OW3200s fit just like the Caltest, as well as these Regal RP2200s, but Regal's P6060 did not fit. Last, because of math, these 2.5 millimeter probes did not fit at all. Over on the Element 14 community, I've started a list with probes and whether or not they fit, but basically don't assume that any five millimeter probe will work. Next, let's take a look at an actual measurement using the adapter. On traditional probes, some people call the clippy part a witch's hat. And you might wonder why not just use that instead of this twin lead adapter. Well, one reason is the spring clip is kind of bulky and often sits at an angle that prevents the probe from fitting into a tight space. And they use alligator clips, which are the bane of my existence. Seriously, I hate alligator clips in general. They fall off, they short to other pins, and they take up a ton of space. The twin lead adapters are far more versatile. For example, they can easily reach into this buried control signal and they stay attached to SMD test points while the ground clips take up like no space. And the bulky pro bodies are easy to get out of the way. Now in this case, I'm clipping onto the header pins because when I clipped onto the IC pins that I need to look at, I couldn't get a good camera angle. Here's what I'm looking at on the scope. The green trace is a control signal and the purple is an enable. The behavior is normal. First, the control asserts, later the enable does, and then they deassert together. Now the scope is watching the control signal for a glitch. On a logic analyzer with certain software running, I could sometimes see one, so I wanted to know if it was real. And it is. The twin lead adapter makes it very easy to do this measurement completely hands off. For those that follow the channel and me, you might recognize that target. And that clip is what some would call foreshadowing. Oh. Also, it is pretty easy to move the scope probe between adapters if you have multiple connected to the same system. So are these probes worth it? Well, I bought them months ago and I have been using them ever since. I think they're great. 
The $20 to $25 range might sound high to some, but I think it is reasonable. My recommendation is to buy at least one Caltest 5mm probe for the adapter. That way you have at least one probe in your lab that works with it. In my case, I dedicated the two 350 MHz probes that I bought to the twin lead adapters. Just like with DMMs, buying high quality oscilloscope probes are always a nice upgrade. By the way, virtually all oscilloscope probe manufacturers make a similar adapter for their probes. It's just that they're really hard to find. So one reason that I like these Caltest probes is because you can actually buy them. Visit the Element 14 community to find show notes with links to these probes. If you do pick one up, please post pictures of how you're using them. I would love to see those. And remember, that is the best place to ask questions because I'm more likely to see and then be able to answer them over there. As always, thank you for watching. For now, it is time for me to get back to accurately reproducing waveforms at one-tenth of the size while being completely hands-off on my electronics workbench.